coaching a sprint phenom. But when I was putting this together, obviously I had a chance to coach Marcellus Moore uh, last year, who was a sprint phenom, uh, ran 10.40 with a 2.8 wind. That's about a five mile an hour wind, 10.40. Uh, the fastest, no 14 year old has ever run faster than that in the world, ever. So it's a pretty special thing. Now I was thinking, really it was, uh, to tell you how I coach Marcellus, I really have to tell you how I coach all my sprinters because it's pretty much the same with a few tweaks. And I think the tweaks are important. Marcellus was a phenom before I met him. I did not know him at this point. Marcellus was 13 at this age. He's in the uh, orange over blue, running AAU. And he ran 11.65. This was his summer after his seventh grade year. I think it's, it's important to say that Marcellus was a phenom before he met me. He was probably a phenom before he ever lifted weights, all that stuff. I think the fastest kids are typically fast when they're young, and we're lucky to get those kids. But then we have to coach them and not screw them up. Is this the same one? Yeah. Okay, this is when I met him. He, uh, we, we allow eighth graders to run at our Hunt Track Town invite. And Marcellus ran, I don't know why they did an F-18, but he ran a 10-8 handheld. And then the high school kids run, ran, a, the winner ran 11-15. So he's wearing his PE stuff from Heritage... Grove Middle School. And then I had him in track camp, uh, a speed camp, the summer before his freshman year. This is the first time I actually got to coach him. His 4.43, in the that's a handheld 40 standing start with spikes, is not all that impressive. But when I saw 094 in the 10 meter fly, Oh my God. Yeah, the 10 meter fly is the true measure of a sprinter. And that's why the 10 meter fly is a big part of my program. And then about four weeks later, he ran in the AU Nationals. He's in lane four, orange over blue. Remember, he's not yet a freshman in high school. He's 14 years old. Pretty cool. Scared the shit out of me. What am I going to do with this kid? Trees do not grow all the way to heaven. A book he told me once that when I'd won like five straight back when I used to be a gambler. Five straight bats, and I was like walking on water, and he said, hey, trees don't grow all the way to heaven. Yeah. No, I, it really worried me. So I, at this point, I, I said to myself, I'm going to keep him happy. I'm going to teach him how to be a great sprinter. I'm going to coach myself out of a position, which means he'll be able to coach himself someday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prioritize rest. And I'm going to try my best to keep him healthy. Those were my goals. And you know what? Maybe that should be our goals for all sprinters. Maybe not just him. I talk about feed the cats. I think feed the cats has all kinds of, uh, uh, of, of angles. Somebody once uh, objected. They thought that I was using uh, cats as a dog whistle for black kids. 
you know, like I was a prejudicial, whatever. It has nothing to do with black people. We're talking about cats as a type of athlete that is highly competitive and doesn't want to jog. That hates miles. But they're explosive and powerful. And feed the cats is a way to find out how to push the buttons of that kid to make him a faster athlete and make him love what we're doing. Now, Stu, Stu's still pissed that I wrote that hit job article on him. He says he's not. He says he's not pissed at me, but I think he's still pissed. But so he, he'll always say like, well, if all you had to do is run fast and practice, it'd be a pretty easy job. So they sit around the pool at Altus thinking up complicated stuff. Um, sprinting is, they do, they do. Echo chamber, oh. Don't tell Stu I said that. But uh, somebody's already tweeted him probably. Do not do that. Oh, and he will never look at my video, ever. Uh, but that's not all we do in practice. It may seem like it sometimes. It is an important thing we do in practice, but it's not all we do. Uh, record, rank, and publish. I'm, I'm absolutely blown away. Mike Boyle, who is like Mount Rushmore strength and conditioning coach, said that the number one thing he learned in 2017 was record, rank, and publish from me. I've been doing it for so long. You know, measuring things. I'm a chemistry teacher. I measure things and I report it. That's what scientists do. You measure it and report it. But see, this is feeding the cats because cats love competition. I know distance runners are really fine people. They, oh, they're great kids. They're like uh, a, a loyal dog. You're like, now what, coach? Okay, we'll run five miles a day. Can I run six? <laughs> <laughs> but then you have to pull them aside sometimes after they run the mile in a meet and say, hey, you got ninth. You just went out and ran that mile. Would you compete? What? I mean, they just run. They don't compete. Okay, you don't have to tell a cat that. Cats are competitive. Now, they may not come to practice on Wednesday, but they're competitive as hell. Uh, I started uh, in 1999, and, and we did, uh, I just did all clock stuff, 40s, record, rank, publish. It works. One of the big things is that positive reinforcement is really important for all of us. And my kids, 20 years ago, I heard Al Carius teach about personal records, personal bests, how important it was. And so I thought, gee, if it's important for distance guys how about sprinters and so now my kids do PRs and records a couple times a week and then I tweet about it use free lap it, it's an amazing thing I, I I can't imagine coaching without it now I, I, I would just do watch but but the 10 meter fly cannot be done with a watch you can do 30 maybe 30 yard flies with a watch drop a hand click but the 10 meter fly is just, that's that pure speed thing, you know? And Carl said last night that you're only at top speed for 10 meters in the 100. I'm pretty proud of this. In 2007, uh, it was the second year of Plainfield North. We had freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. We had three kids sub 460 in the 40. And then the next year we had eight. And the next year we had 12. Last year we had 32. Kids under 460 in the 40. I'm proud of that. Feeding the cats. The fastest 10 guys at Plainfield North. Last year was our best year. Average 432. Now that's handheld. Standing start. Hard track. Spikes. But I'm proud of that. Oh, and, and also... Of our 10 fastest guys in our school last year, and this is baseball players, football players, everybody, nine of the 10 were on my track team. Because when you feed the cats, the cats will come. When you build it, they will come to you. 
I like doing, not everybody has improvement like this. For example, Marcellus does not. But these are two guys that I charted. Uh, the, the blue was one sprint and the red was another one. Four years, three years. And these were all of our winter sessions. And you can tell the guy, uh, 120 in the 10 meter fly, finished uh, 094. As a freshman, the guy in the red came in at 117, finished at, yeah, 096. That's cool stuff. You will not see that with Marcellus. Once in a while, we get amazing high responders. This kid was a B-team football player. High responder. But you know what? If you don't measure it, you don't. You can't brag about this. And by measuring it, this kid got excited. He didn't play one play on the A-team as a freshman. And then he gained 1,800 yards and led us to the 7A championship game his senior year. Now he's a college football player. Cool stuff. This isn't everybody, but this was Tyler Hoosman. I'm huge on hormesis, which means that I want to train people with, without going over the line. I want to train people with a minimal dose. I always believe this. I know it bothers you, but if a kid says, ah, coach, I'm, go home, take a nap. Oh, I think I can run. No, go, I mean, if you're not feeling good, I don't want to train you. I don't train sore people. I don't train depressed people. It's better not to practice. We do RPR. Marcel got activated before. Uh, I coached him in football last year, and I activated him, and he ran back a kickoff or something. He was in love with it from then on. We activate Marcellus. I activate Marcellus uh, at every meet, at every meet. He loves it. Everybody does. That's Chris activating somebody from Nazareth. You don't have to memorize this because you don't have to do anything aerobic. We live aerobic lives. We walk and breathe, sleep. No sprinter workouts should ever. Oh, by the way, I love Carl. Carl was so good last night. I disagree with everything he said. <laughs> everything. I mean, I could probably find some. I, I, I remember all the things I disagree with, though. So that thing about taking three laps, are you, you going to tell cats to go take three laps? Nito Uomo. True. Uh, I, this is a hard thing to say. Nito Uomo wa ito muezu. If you chase two hares, hares are rabbits. If you chase two hares, you won't catch either. When I heard this Japanese proverb, I thought, too many coaches try to get kids in shape aerobically and then do the intensity that I call alactic work. And I believe you'll have slow sprinters and they won't be distance runners either. We never take a lap. Sorry, Carl. We never take a lap ever. The furthest we ever run in practice is 200 meters. He was talking about doing six times 200. I would, I mean, no, we don't do it. Uh, we say a, a lactic means you're doing things full intensity for five, six, seven seconds. Lactate means you're running about 20 some seconds full speed and getting dizzy. This is how I call speed reserve. I know Marcel's can only run 24 miles an hour. Okay, but this is just a metaphor. Okay, train 100 miles an hour so 80 feels comfortable. If you train your guys at 60, 80 is going to feel uncomfortable. That's speed reserve. This is uh, Derek Hansen. This is a more complicated way of talking about speed reserve. Uh, this is a guy uh, went to Alton and. He's been feeding the cats for years. He was the coach at Madison. And he went to Alton. And he started, started the program. By the way, one of the best things about my program is it's 100% reproducible. You can do what I do 
without being very smart. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple to do what I do, actually. But anyway, one of his kids said, we, we never sprinted last year. We just ran. Beautiful statement. Sprinting and running are not the same things. Because, see, running, these are the best distance guys in the world. And, you know, Andy Dirk's my distance coach. And he said, hey, you know, you talk about sprinting all the time. The best, the best distance guys are sprinters. Hell, if they are. They're not picking up their feet. Carl said that distance running is just like sprint. No, it isn't. It's two totally different things. These guys do not pick up their feet. They have no vertical force. They could have been sprinters, but they ruined them. <laughs> yeah, only slow guys go to the distance group. If you're fast, why would you go to the distance group? Uh, no, I, I, I love this. This is a great. But I, I do believe this is one of my quotes. You know, trees, you, don't, you can't see trees grow, but they do. I totally believe in keeping things simple. I love essentialism, simplicity, clarity. People make up stuff. <laughs> I, 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 I understand this a little bit. And get, people love Gary Winkler. But they're really what's wrong with our sport. Complex bullshit. The only surefire way, uh, I totally believe this. Stu would say, if it's that simple, then I wouldn't be, be, I wouldn't be paid 500000 a year. You're right. Uh, this is a great story. Travis ran for my son, Alec, uh, who couldn't be here. He was the first consortium he missed because I had a baby on Thursday. I, I mean, What? Thursday. So anyway, Travis is real fast. He, in practice, never went over more than two hurdles, ever. He also won the intermediates. Never went over more than two hurdles, ever. Never went over hurdles without spikes on. They cherished reps. That's another way to feed the cats. And he was a total cat, too. He was no fun to coach. He's a full ride in Nebraska. All right, lane four is open, so watch Anderson. Can Anderson get under 14 and beat session? Look at Anderson. He is rolling. Anderson with Taylor of Kia North following, and then Carr Jones, Anderson across. Where'd he go? Number 1388 is session. 1359. Stick record. Travis Anderson. Edwardsville. He doesn't know it yet. There he is. Cool. Uh, I've been saying this for years. I don't know these two Canadians or French people, but uh, I've been saying this for years that, that we have muscle fibers. They're fast twitch and slow twitch. Red fibers, white fibers. And then we have the in-betweeners. And if you sprint your kids, those in-betweeners will become white. And if you run distance, they'll get red. If you sprint, they get white. If you lift weights, they get red. This proves it. Altus puts this out. This, this is the kind of stuff that Altus does. Uh, I have no idea what that means. I think type 2B are, are fast twitch. Um, the guy sent me uh, some clinic notes from Australia on Charlie Francis. I just thought Charlie Francis was a steroid expert. <laughs> but, but I was told that a lot, of my, a lot of my ideas match Charlie's. So I started reading this stuff. and I Bear with me. This is some pretty good stuff. Most, uh, most kids are plugged into like soccer programs when they're like four. They never sprint. They end up with a bunch of red fiber. And all this is saying 
is if you sprint, you get more fast twitch. You keep the fast twitch you have, you don't lose it. If you go out and run miles, you'll lose it. I say all the time that sprinting is neurological, it's not muscular. And weight room people all want to argue with me. Oh, but the strength is a cup. No. It's, and so the CNS is like a cup. You don't let it overflow. It goes back to that hormesis thing. You want to be on the, you want to have good stuff happen. You do not want to be on the decline at a workout. How about this? Think about that. That like blows up the entire coaching thing, you know, like no pain, no gain. If you're not sore the next day, you did nothing. He's saying you should never be sore. Wow. What I say is that your workout today should never ruin tomorrow. Your workout today should never ruin tomorrow. If it does, you shouldn't practice tomorrow. That's why we do not practice the day after a meet. If we have a Monday meet, my sprinters go home on a holiday on Tuesday. But coach, do your distance guys feel... No, one time a guy asked, Coach, do the distance guys still up? Yes, you do. Well, what? Because if you were fast, you'd be a sprinter. <laughs> Nobody says anything anymore. <clears throat> How about this? Uh, uh, Charlie's stuff, I was like so excited when I read this stuff. Holding them back. Only 10% of my time motivating them to do more. Holding them back. Speed should be the focus. Basketball, football, soccer, lacrosse. It's not. Conditioning. I like upper body lifting. He says, uh, you know, keep it general. Keep it general. There's nothing specific in the weight room that helps a sprinter. Upper body can be good for the nervous system. Go in and have a great workout. I don't have any problem with that. I love this. How many coaches try to get their kid in the fast heat? I hate it. We're in the fast heat for our indoor conference. Oswego cried around about it. Like, okay, they never ran that time. Well, yeah, but we're going to. So, okay, we got put in the slow heat. And I told Nick, I said, make sure you tell us we go, we're going to kick their ass from the slow heat. We'd be in by seven seconds. <laughs> you got in the fast heat. Good for you. So anyway, it's really important for your kids to win. Put them in winning situations. That's why we do all of our training solo. So the kids are never getting beat. Getting beat knocks a kid down. I always thought that Charlie was short to long. He says, short to short. That's like me. Keep it short. This is important for people that have little kids. Never time them in the 100 if you want to be a sprinter. That's a distance event. The 100 a long way. Go short. We used to, Plainfield has no hills. But when I was in Harrisburg, we had a, like a 200 meter gradual hill. And we would sprint up it five times, walk down, take about 10 minutes, walk down, sprint back up. Loved it. I don't do enough with med balls, but he says med balls. I, this is totally me. I don't teach block starts till February, but we do accelerations every day. You can, if, if you're good at accelerating, the blocks I think are easy, unless you get too complicated. I always say that sprinters run with their reptilian brain. I say that the reason why I take pictures at track meets is because you can't coach sprinters in the middle of a race. And he's saying the same thing. This also has huge impact in football and especially football. All the complex stuff is that players that are using their front brain, their thinking brain are not fast. Paralysis by analysis. So many football teams play slow because they're too complicated. Uh, cats. Short-tempered, explosive, and intense. It's weird, but Marcellus is none of these things. 
except for when he runs. He's a psycho killer when he runs. But, but he's the calmest guy. I love this. Young athletes. Got to race a lot. And time them a lot. That's why we, that's why we have two speed days every week. We had one this week, Monday and Thursday. We usually go Monday and Wednesday. I like this. We do distances up to 200 meters. I, people say, oh, you never run more than 200? He's saying 150. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, my volume is too high, I think. Uh, I love personal best. I mean, we are constantly, every guy that runs a 40, we, we time the 10 at the end of the 40. Anytime I tell the guy the time, they're either like stomping, mad, cussing, or they're, yes! If you, if you saw that happen, we had, a, we had a visitor from Colorado Thursday. If you, if you watched it happen, you would be like, yeah, that's, that's why it works. Uh, you can't sprint every day. I say three days tops. I, I, when I talk about football today in the last session, I'll tell football coaches that, okay, you're on sprint in the games. You got to pick your other two days. Three sprint days a week, tops. Maybe two. But incomplete recovery, you just, you just got to fully recover. You're going to be slow. I asked Marcellus, uh, he's in my honors chemistry class. I said, hey, if we gave you Friday off and you ran in a track meet Saturday, how fast would you run the 100? He said 1090. Because he's been overworked. He has not been trained as a sprinter. Now, he still looked fast on the football field. 1090 is still fast. But he wasn't no 1040. Incomplete recovery is huge. I love this too. Hey, Charlie, you can't be. Gerald, Mock is the guy that did all the sprint drills and stuff. The mock drills. Anyway, he said, Charlie, you can't be training your 100 meter guys by running them 400s in practice. Even a week out. Now, Carl hasn't read this stuff, but. but. Now, when you talk about weights, I've talked about white meat, dark meat. You know, chicken has white meat, dark meat. The wings are white. That's what we have too. White, twi white and red. The red is red because a lot of blood, a lot of blood flow, a lot of mitochondria. But in the weight room, there's, you're just building red muscle. Uh, I do like Stu. Stu had all these legit training programs. And then he takes a, a, a jab at all strength and conditioning coaches by saying the get strong thing is only believed by dummies. So, yeah, anybody that says, I'm going to get guys real fast in the weight room, Stu would disagree with them. I would, too. Franz Bosch is an icon. Yep. Less explosive. This guy's slower in hell. I love this. We're working with Connor Artman, uh, Chris and I. He'd come to me one week and go to Chris, another come to me, another. And I'll never forget, John Artman, championship coach 1A, Illini West, Connor's dad, said, okay, Chris, what should we be doing in the weight room? And Chris looked at Connor, looked back. He goes, Connor's strong enough. I don't know if you can see his quad right here. He, he doesn't need, he's strong enough. But you talk to weight room people, they think that you should lift to infinity that you should lift until you're yeah it's like that's because they make money off the weight room now nick chubb from uh he is a running back at georgia now gonna be in the nfl like this was him in high school now oh yo can you he's up high okay <laughs> i know you guys are looking down here he's up here yeah Okay, if I was advising him, I would say, be careful in the weight room. Just kind of go in and you do not need to gain 20 pounds. God has blessed you with, in, oh, by the way, the, I wonder if he's fast. 
There's the jump sprint relationship. Anybody can do that, can run 1060. Anybody. I've never seen a guy that could jump like that who was slow, ever. Now I've seen people look like him that were slow. So jumping is pretty important. I think sunshine is very important. That's why uh, Coach Fitzgerald here from California, I take that 40 whatever, 40 and change, four by one with a grain of salt. It was a fluke. They get so much sunshine there. Their kids are so hopped up on dopamine, a natural neurotransmitter. All we can do to increase ours is sleep because we don't get much sun. Now, having said that, I'll tell you about Marcellus in a second. I do believe Carl is the, the perfect runner. These are the only things I look for. I look for the high knee. I look for the foot under the knee. I look for the hand at least 12 inches past the hip. My guys do that really well. A lot of runners run like this. My guys all go past the hip. Cross the hip. Cross the hip. And then the tallness. Get tall is my number one cue. Be like Carl. I didn't make that just because I've had this slide forever. This is Quest Young. And it looks like he's going to land in front. But look how, look how far. That foot is going to come down right underneath his center of mass. So don't tell me he's reaching there. He's not reaching. We repeat a lot of stuff. I know coaches hate to repeat stuff because we've got to keep it fresh and all that kind of stuff. But we repeat a lot of stuff. We do drills. Chris talks bad about drills. And that's what's great about this consortium is that we, we can disagree and still be friends. We do drills because I think this is really important. Tall, hand back, foot underneath the knee. We do drills. That's the only time I can coach kids. When do you coach kids? If you're not doing drill work, when do you coach them? That, that's a drill. Now, periodization. Here's uh, Marcellus's periodization. Of course, he does AU track in the summer too, and that's really hard. It's hard to do both. But then football, max speed in the winter, and then we finally start doing some lactate work and also start really worrying about recovery. This is Marcellus's, how he spends his fall. That's just not fair, is it? It's just not fair. <laughs> they can't adapt to his speed. No sh yeah. <laughs> adapt! We gotta adapt! <laughs> now, if I was coaching Marcellus all year, we would do no lactate work ever. We'd be max speed and rest, X factor. And then in the spring, things change. Because all of a sudden, we're not building at speed base anymore. All of a sudden, we are now concerned with running faster than the 100 and the 200 and the 4x4. Four four. So things really change. But I guarantee you, the guys that you want on your track team are guys that can run 092. That's, I mean, if you have 092s on your track team, you can worry about everything else later. Every day, our guys go home feeling better than they did when they came into practice. Every yellow day up there. Lots of green days up there, too. Those are days that I didn't even see them. This spring break week, I told Marcellus, I said, hey, you better not be doing those hard workouts with Boatwright. He goes, oh, coach, don't worry about it. I'm going on a cruise. Dopamine. Oh, this is, this is the first race back. He'd had one workout in 13 days. He's probably going to be pretty rusty here. Probably lost it all. He's pretty normal at the 30 or 40 yard mark. 
But he's abnormal when he gets to top speed. Top speed wins. 10.55 is a nice debut for a freshman. First outdoor meet. It's all about the cruise. It wasn't that, it wasn't like we had one great workout that caused that. It was the sunshine.